Hey, Yvonne, can we see Marker again from Sound Masters talking all things vinyl as always. Today we are on the record cleaning topic. Once again, it's a popular topic, of course, amongst record collectors, naturally, because as we know, great sounding records need to be clean. But what are the best ways to clean records and how should you not clean vinyl records? Today I'm going to go through some of the more alternative approaches that are popular amongst some collectors and I'm going to go over my reasons as to why I don't personally recommend them. At the end of the day, I'm sure I will get people with the opposite opinion of me in the comments and that is absolutely fine. They're your records, you do whatever you want to do with your collection. But from my own personal view and experience, I do not recommend these following approaches. So let's not mess around, let's start with something big, wood glue. Now this is one of the most bizarre ways that I've seen to clean records, but it is a common and popular approach with a lot of record collectors. It kind of makes me cringe personally. I don't like the idea at all. I did experiment on a record once and used it. I can see the logic and I do understand what people are getting at with the wood glue approach. Of course, for any of you who don't know about the wood glue cleaning method, essentially it's a approach to cleaning records whereby you smear wood glue, actual, you know, DIY wood glue all over the surface of a record. You allow it to dry overnight and then in theory you peel it off all in one piece hopefully and then this takes all of the grime and dust and dirt out of the grooves with the wood glue so I understand the approach and I know a lot of people reserve it as a bit of a last resort on records they're struggling to improve but it just makes me cringe just the idea the idea that you would use this on a regular basis just what if the wood glue doesn't completely peel off in one piece what if it leaves parts of it behind it's going to be incredibly difficult to get any more of that off if it doesn't come off in one piece there are potentials for obviously you know you want to avoid the label but the potential damage to the label there as well um, what sort of residue does it leave behind i i don't like the method personally and more to the point it's just damn time consuming to clean on average every 12 hours one side of a record it's just i don't know i don't i, I don't get it number two is household cleaning products namely things like windex so for those of you who aren't based in north america i did spend some time living in north america so i'm well aware of what windex is and why it's a popular cleaning product for all kinds of things it's essentially so if you if you live in the uk it's essentially an all-purpose surface cleaner glass and surface cleaner that it comes in a spray you know that kind of side of things so it's a cleaning product it's a household cleaning product and I don't particularly like the idea of using it on record and the reason I don't particularly like the idea of it is that I don't trust that the ingredients included in this are necessarily particularly safe or effective on vinyl records. It might work, it might help to clean a record, but I tend to steer clear of things that aren't purposely designed by people who know what they're doing for cleaning records. So if you head over to my website, you can actually see a list of that I, I sourced here of what's included in Windex as um as the ingredients and you take a look at this and things like you know colorings in there and all kinds of fragrances and everything. These are just things that I personally think there is absolutely no need to take the risk with your records when really you know purpose-made record cleaning fluids they are relatively cost effective so okay granted it's not as cheap as buying bottles of Windex but you know if you really care about your records I personally wouldn't take the risk if you want to do it all up to you but I personally wouldn't take the risk. Next up is good old domestic tap water. So just regular old tap water. Seems innocent enough, right? How could that damage your records? Well, the truth of the matter is that tap water contains a lot of impurities, things like minerals and lime scale. In my area where I live, the water is very hard indeed and contains a lot of lime scale. I only have to put that in a regular household iron, for example, and it will very quickly clog up that iron with lime scale. It really can destroy things. It can destroy appliances. It can you know, really it really clogs up things like kettles if you don't use a filter in your water, for example. 
So you can see why you don't want to put that anywhere near your records. But just filtering the water alone isn't really enough either. What you want to do is use distilled water as part of any base of any record cleaning fluid that you use, whether it be homemade or whether you go and buy a purpose designed record cleaning fluid from a specialist company. Always should be purified water, preferably distilled. Often used hand in hand with tap water is regular household dish detergent. So that's our next one. I don't recommend using dish detergent as part of a record cleaning process. And it's a very similar story for me to the Windex one. You just kind of, you look at the ingredients. I don't know for sure that those are safe on records. I'm no chemist, but I look at some of those ingredients. I think some of them are questionable, if not just a little bit unnecessary. So, you know, with any record cleaning approach, I always go with the mantra that you use as gentler process as possible to in order to get the result so we don't want to go in with a sledgehammer to kill a fly go too heavy-handed straight away you know you try a light clean to begin with if that doesn't work then you step up to the next level maybe you know you give it a more heavy hand cleaning or you step it up to a record cleaning machine that kind of side of things whatever it might be i just think you're better off starting kind of light and working your way up rather than going straight in at the deep end and throwing unknown things into the equation such as some of the ingredients that are in regular things like dish detergent. One thing you can use dish detergent for though I should add as a bit of a caveat here is you can use dish detergent to very successfully clean up record cleaning pads like the groove wash ones that I use as you know full well on this channel. So you can use dish detergent absolutely fine to use on these pads to keep them clean because of course we want to keep these clean because otherwise we're just spreading muck from one record to the next. So it's important to keep them clean and a little bit of dish detergent with some distilled water is the best way to clean up these pads. Now that's absolutely okay because you're going to thoroughly rinse the pad and get rid of the dish detergent before you apply it back to a record. This next one will probably ruffle a few feathers. It's isopropyl alcohol. And there are people who swear by it, use absolutely tons of it as part of homemade record cleaning fluids. And then there are people on the other side of the debate that will say, stay away, go alcohol free. Now, where this comes from is that there are people out there who will tell you that isopropyl alcohol particularly when used in very heavy quantities, can damage plasticizers in vinyl over time and leave the groove wall brittle. So there's a concern there. The jury may be out to a degree on this, and I'm no chemist, but when it comes to this kind of side of things, I tend to stay on the side of caution. There are people who will completely dismiss this idea, and then there are people who are very worried about it indeed. So I would say, to be safe, go either very, very low isopropyl alcohol in the mix of anything that you use, or if you're very, very worried, go alcohol free. And certainly, actually, if you're cleaning shellac records, not vinyl records, then you must not use any alcohol whatsoever. You need an alcohol free record cleaning fluid to go anywhere near shellac or alcohol will actually just melt the shellac surface. So that's something to bear in mind as well. But with these things, I err on the side of caution. And I've spoken to people like Groove Washer, for example, directly, and they don't even think it's that effective as a record cleaning fluid, at least not as part of the main ingredient for cleaning records. What happens is it dries far too quickly. So it doesn't have enough time to work on the contaminants and simply just allows the grime to re-dry on the record surface. So, you know, from the people I've spoken to as well, lots of isopropyl alcohol as part of any record cleaning mix isn't that effective. There are better, more gentler ways perhaps for you to clean your record. Certainly if you can smell the isopropyl, if you can smell alcohol in the record cleaning fluid, directly obviously then there's probably far too much of it in that record cleaning fluid in my view this next one will seem obvious to so many of you but i think i just i'll have to mention it really don't i, I mean it's brushing against the grooves not going in circular motions with a cleaning pad uh, and instead going from side to side inside and outside outside and inside uh, or circular motions that kind of side of things so what you want to do is go in nice circular motions with the groove around the record surface now Apologies if that seems obvious to so many of you, but you'd be surprised how many people don't adhere to that rule. And it is a, it is a surefire way for you to potentially scratch your record. You could drag particles from side to side that could be a bit left in the cleaning pad that you drag over the record surface. It's a surefire way to potentially scratch your records. And that just leads to an unhappy record collector. 
So that concludes today's topic. I hope you've enjoyed it in some way. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you want to hurl abuse at me? Do you want to add something else to the list that I've not mentioned here? Let us know down in the comments below. Whatever you'd like to get off your chest, let us know down in that comment section as always. And if you are new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. We'll see you in that next one. Till then, keep spinning.